Hello and thank you for joining me here. This is Jen Espinosa Kaswami coming to you live from La Crosse, Wisconsin. So I apologize for starting half an hour late. The reason why I'm starting late is my family decided to go on an impromptu vacation. So La Crosse, Wisconsin is a few hours outside of my hometown and we thought we would just kind of chill in this lovely resort center out here in La Crosse and enjoy the rest of our weekend. So that's the reason why I started this live late. But I'm so excited that you're joining me today because we're talking about how to coach yourself. And I actually had someone ask me, well, why would you give away your coaching for free? Why would you tell people how to do what you do? How do you get clients that way? Now, here's the thing. I was on a call with a, one of my very special clients, my VIP, and I have been working with this person for quite a while now. And she's making fantastic progress. However, the biggest challenges that people have, usually when they've spent you know, decades dieting, is how to coach themselves to understand what to do when they fall off the wagon or fall off the track or whatever language you want to use in terms of you're not reaching your goals or you're not getting the kind of progress you want. So I thought, as a responsible coach and as someone who wants to provide as much support to you as I possibly can, I'm going to walk you through the process that I use with my private coaching clients um, to help them, to help coach them through whatever their particular challenges are. So this is really amazing content, and it's going to walk you through the process. Now you may think, well, all I need to do is just watch this video and I will know exactly what to do and I don't need to work with Jen, all that sort of thing. There is a caveat. Yes, you will learn the process. Yes, you will learn what I do in a nutshell with my clients when I sit down on a phone call with them during our Celebrate sessions. <laughs> but it's very difficult to master the coaching principles. Myself, I struggle with doing this in terms of my own business. So, um, yes, you will learn what you need to do. You will learn the steps in which you need to do it. But until you practice it and apply it every day or when you're most demotivated, it's not going to help you. So I'm happy to share this amazing, free, valuable content with you. But I do caution you, you know, don't, don't feel like this is a substitute for getting the type of support you need and when you need it. So are you ready to learn how to coach yourself? There are a few steps involved, and we're going to go over five different steps. Now, before we jump into that, I do want to let you know that I am trained as a coach. And what I mean by that is I have a graduate degree from Augsburg, which is a local college here in the Minneapolis area. And part of my coaching, or part of my leadership degree, it's a degree in leadership, so a graduate degree in leadership. One of my most powerful classes I took for that degree was coaching and consulting. And at the time, I'd been working in financial services, so I'm like, well, consulting makes more sense for me. I have 15 plus years in the industry. I know what I'm doing. I'm a certified fraud examiner. Consulting is my deal. It took me several years, though, before I realized, no, coaching is my deal. Because coaching uses a different skill set than consulting does. And I'll just briefly go over that before we talk about how you can coach yourself. So consultants. They're like subject matter experts, right? They walk into a situation, they analyze the situation, so they get, gather the data, they understand what's happening, they interview people on site, and then they analyze the data. Once they're done analyzing the data, then they come up with recommendations or solutions or areas of opportunity, you know corporate speak, and they present this area of opportunity in front of the management team or whoever the decision makers are in the company. And then they say, okay, based on what I've seen and what I've discovered about your situation, here's how you fix it. And then they step away and walk away and that's it. They get paid their fee, they've given their expert analysis, they have um, whatever, printouts and resources and tools to help this comp company implement it. But they step out. They don't help the company implement it. They rely upon the company to implement whatever they choose because, you know, there's a lot of red tape and there's a lot of decision making when it comes to do we make this change happen or not. So that's what a consultant does and that's not what I do. So as a coach, the kinds of things that I do, I don't tell you what to do. I step into a situation, I interview you, I find out more about your situation and everyone's situation is unique so that's one of the beauties of my job here or my career is everyone is different and I don't necessarily know what I'm stepping into. But that motivates me. So I interview you. I get an understanding of who you are, what your challenges are, what you're looking for. And then, 
through a very in-depth and um, gentle process, I help you choose what your next steps are. Again, the big difference is I'm not telling you what to do. I'm helping you decide what you need to do. And most of us already know what we need to do. Sometimes we don't know how to do it. Sometimes we need a kick in the pants to do it, that sort of thing. But most of us generally know what to do. So coaching is different because I help you get to that next step. But it's not because I decided that's what works for you. It's because that's what you have told me works for you. You see the difference there? And I am with you every step of the way. So it's not like I tell you, okay, we have unearthed that you need to do X, Y, and Z. Have fun with that. I'll see you later. <laughs> Here's two cookies and call me in the morning. No, that's not how it works. I walk with you every step of the way. So if you're struggling, I'm there. If you are doing great, I'll cheer you on. In a nutshell, that's the difference between consulting and coaching. So I love being a coach. But one of the challenges I'm noticing with certain clients that I've worked with is they say, well, I didn't really get on this phone call with you. I dreaded it. I knew I had to do this. And I was scared because I knew that there was a lot of challenges and I didn't do everything I was supposed to do. Um, there are a lot of challenges. Hi, Cindy. Thank you for joining us today. We're talking about how to coach yourself. So this came up because I have a lot of clients who said, well, I just don't know what to do. I don't know how to motivate myself. So I'm giving you the gift of figuring out how to coach yourself. Again, these are... Um, these are simple principles, that doesn't mean they're easy principles, and you do have to practice them continuously to get the most benefit. Are you ready to learn how to coach yourself? I'm super excited to share this with you because it's very important information. So first of all, in order to coach yourself, you have to describe the situation. And this is going to seem funny because it's just you, yourself, and you. When you're in a, a partnership, in a coaching relationship, then I will ask you things to bring this out, but it's just you. So pretending that you're your own coach and you say, okay, I'm going to describe the situation as it exists today. So perhaps, you know, my name is whatever. This is my current weight today. Here are things I've tried in the past. Um, here are my fears of why I cannot succeed. Here are some things I've told myself about my ability to succeed. Um, here's what I'm willing to do to succeed whether that's investment or time investment, financial investment, you're deciding what you need to do. So just describe the situation. So that's what you would be doing with me in a phone call. You'd be describing your situation. And I would help you point out a couple of questions and I'd dig a little deeper. So first you describe the situation. And second, write it down. So this is why journaling is so powerful and why a lot of people need to start journaling. Because if you don't have the benefit of a coach or someone to reflect back what you're describing as your situation, it's very difficult for you to see the situation from all angles. So if you're describing the situation as part of this coaching process, write it down. Just write everything down. Stream of consciousness, don't edit yourself. Don't worry if it's going to stare at you and you're worried if it's the right thing to say or do. Stream of consciousness, write everything that comes to your mind about your current situation. That's step number one. Make sure you get a pen and paper and write it down. This is going to be helpful for you going forward. Okay, so that's the first step of coaching yourself. Describe your situation. Write it down. Now, look at your language. This is really, really important. So I want you to go over the same piece of paper that you wrote your situation and point out different language. What I mean by that is... I had someone who told me the other day, I went to the restaurant and I ordered whatever I wanted and that's okay because I was good that day. What she meant was she was eating on her plan. She was eating salad, she was eating vegetables, she was eating nutrition, what have you. But using the word good or bad in association with the foods you're eating is a trigger, right? It's an emotional reaction to something you're doing. So anytime you look at your situation, what you've written down in your journal, and there's an emotional word there, whether it's good or bad, food is neutral, remember, there's no emotions associated with food, or 
if there are, you should recognize them for what they are. So look over what you wrote down for your situation, step number two, and identify the emotional trigger words that you have out there. Step number three, are they more negative or are they more positive? I know I'm asking you to dig really deep here, but usually you can identify right away if it's a positive or a negative word. So again, if you're describing your food situations or your past experiences with weight loss in a negative light, we need to somehow get you out of that. Remember, this is you coaching yourself. I cannot get you out of it if I don't know what you're dealing with. You know what you're dealing with because you wrote it down and you've identified what the emotions are with that. How do we turn that around? That is the power of coaching. Now, I'm not saying that you have to become a cheerleader and wave a pom-pom and all that good stuff, but you have to recognize what your patterns are before you can shift them. There are a million different strategies you can use to shift them, but not until you've learned how to become aware of them. That is the power of coaching. So now that you've identified your patterns, you've identified your language around those patterns, how do you shift them? Right? That's the million dollar question. How do you shift those patterns? You can take inventory. You could totally make it opposite. For example, the example I gave you were my friend who said, oh, I, I was good and now I'm eating whatever I want, which might be bad. You could say, I was eating foods that supported my plan instead of saying I was eating good foods. I was eating foods that allowed me to eat the way I am right now. I was eating the right foods for the situation I was in. And even right or wrong is kind of skating the line. But you can shift your language entirely. So if you're like, well, I've never been able to lose weight and keep it off. What you can say is, in the past, I tried these things, and now I'm ready to try what works. So there are different ways you can, you can shift your language, whether it's something you did in the past or something you can do in the future. I would love to walk you through those because this is a very difficult piece to do all on your own. I don't do this for myself in my business, which is why I'm working with a business coach. And you probably are not doing this for yourself in, in terms of your health. So this is a very important thing. Shift that language. Are you with me so far? Okay, so you described the situation, number one, wrote it down in a journal, you identified your emotional triggers, whether that's positive or negative language, it's language that you're associating with your experiences, note those down, and then you shift those languages. Now what, right? Isn't coaching about your goals and how you figure out what your goals are? Yes and no. Uh, your goals will change depending on where you are and how you've shifted your language. Now folks, I'm talking about mindset and I'm talking about how you feel about what you've accomplished so far and what you were able to accomplish so far. This is not something you're gonna master in two minutes. However, once you've shifted your language to more positive things or more acknowledgement of the work that you're putting in and that you're capable of putting in, what do you do next? Well, you figure out what your next steps are, right? If your situation is such that you're like, and I can't go on this way, then you have to make a decision. Can you coach yourself through this entire process? Can you identify the right goals for you? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Can you continue to journal consistently about your experiences and your challenges and your opportunities? If you can, you have my blessing, go and do it. But in order to coach yourself through a process, you have to become aware of your current situation. You have to recognize your emotional triggers in that situation, and you have to shift those triggers. It's a three-step process, and it sounds extremely simple because it is. It's not easy, folks. Just the other day, I was chatting with my business mastermind group, and I said, well, I didn't really accomplish much. You know, I did this, and I did that, and it wasn't really a whole lot in the past month. And when I was done speaking, my whole group, they're like, oh my God, do you realize what you did? Did you realize you did this and this and this? That's like totally amazing. And I was like, huh? Is that amazing? So when it comes to your health, do you always focus on the negative? What you didn't accomplish? What you have yet to accomplish? You need to learn how to shift that language. By the way, I'm here to support you 100% of the way. 
I did give you a brief glimpse into my coaching process. And like I said, it's a process. So you're not going to master it today or tomorrow or the day after. So if you want me to walk you through that, I'm happy to do so. It's my, my passion, something I enjoy doing. But uh, I will leave you with this. If you haven't been able to coach yourself to this point, maybe it's time to try something different. I'm not saying you have to do coaching. But if you have a hard time talking to yourself without berating yourself or scolding yourself or feeling like you have to worry about what people think about you, then maybe it's time to get someone to support you. Again, coaching is not just about me cheerleading you. I will do that because I work with amazing people. But it's also about understanding what you have accomplished so far. And most of us, myself included, are not very good at acknowledging our awesomeness. Yes, I know. Even I struggle with this. I would find it very difficult to coach myself. I was able to coach myself through my health journey. 100 pounds lost. I coached myself through it. If you have a hard time so far in your journey, let's have a conversation. No obligation. I won't push you into anything, but I do want to understand what your challenges are and that can help you identify those next steps. Because that's another piece of coaching. I can help you identify the next steps. Not as someone who can talk to you about science all day long or someone who is pushing a certain product. That's not what I do. I can help you identify the next steps as someone who has lost a significant amount of weight myself and understands the particular challenges that happen at each stage of weight loss. When I was losing 10 pounds versus losing 50 pounds versus losing 80 pounds, I was at a different stage and I had to keep coaching myself through that process. So no matter what stage you're in today, I would love to understand where you are and I'd love to support you. So this is Jenna Spinoza Goswami. I do have to get going. My kids want to hit the pool and I would like to enjoy the rest of the weekend. But thank you so much for joining me live. Thank you, Cindy, for joining me tonight. Let me know what your biggest takeaway was. Even if you didn't watch this video live, let me know if you want to have a conversation. Let me know if you'd like me to help walk you through this process in a 30-minute phone call. It's not easy to do, but I'd love to do it. So thank you for joining me on this Friday evening, and I hope you have a healthy weekend. This is Jenna Spinoza Kaswami, and have a wonderful night. Take care.